Roads are a relatively ancient invention for the modern human. The first mention of road building came over 6,000 years ago, when the people of Mesopotamia built roads in the cities of Ur and Babylon. The Sumerians formed mud bricks, and after drying, these would be laid into bitumen. Bitumen is a natural sticky black substance found in asphalt. The first roads in Europe, however, were built of timber and stone. Centuries would pass before asphalt was used in Europe and America. Today in the UK, we have a road network totalling approximately 262,000 miles, which, if set in a straight line, would circle the earth over 10 times. At present, 95% of our British roads are made up of asphalt. So, how are new roads built? Very broadly, the construction of new roads can be described in the following three processes. Setting out, earthworks, and paving construction. The most commonly used setting out procedure is the profile board method. In essence, it's a series of boards that show the exact level one metre above the completed construction level, which are placed at intervals along the proposed roads. Next would be earthworks. Topsoil is removed along with any vegetation before scraping and grading of the area to a finished formation level. Below the formation level, the soil is known as the subgrade. Most earthworks are formed by cut and fill, and the type of fill material must be considered, not only in terms of its physical properties, but on the conditions in which it's to be used and the methods of compaction. It's essential that the strength of the subgrade is tested prior to the earthwork's beginning. The required thickness of the pavement is determined by the subgrade strength, so it's important to make the subgrade as strong as possible. This can be achieved using the following steps. 1. The removal of poor material in cuttings and replacing with the selected fill. 2. Compact and subgrade to a high dry density. 3. Provide an adequate subsoil drainage. And four, soil stabilization methods, such as the use of cement, bitumous materials, or chemicals. Finally, onto paving construction. Once the subgrade has been laid and all the relevant services and drainage is installed, the construction of the paving can commence. Paving material can fall into one of the two categories, flexible paving or rigid paving. Flexible paving consists of materials placed in layers on top of the subgrade. The first layer is named the base course. It's constructed to a depth of 100 to 150 millimeters and is generally built up of construction aggregates. The wearing course, which is laid upon it, is often denser and stronger. The wearing course should have good non-skid capabilities, minimal glare and durability. The main materials that are used are hot rolled asphalt, dense bitumen macadam, dense tar macadam and porous asphalt. Porous asphalt is mainly used as it's an open graded material that is designed to allow rapid drainage of surface water, thereby reducing spray as well as tyre noise. Rigid paving consists of reinforced or unreinforced in situ concrete slab, laid over a thin granular base course. The rigidity and strength of the pavement enables loads and stresses to be distributed over a wide area of the subgrade. Rigid paving is made up of the following layers, subgrade, subbase, anti-friction membrane normally made of polythene sheeting, in situ concrete paving slab, and asphalt or a similar topping. Overall, our road network takes farm produce to market, children to school, and are the conduit of life's activities. Matrone, a commercial hub to your business.